Hey, on the one hand, we have the tried and true behavior subject, and on the other hand, we have the new signal features. Let's get ready to rumble. Just kidding. In reality, there are use cases for both. In this video, we'll take a look at how to replace a synchronous behavior subject stream with a signal. If you are new to Angular v16 signals, check out my introductory signals video. You can find the link to that video in the upper right corner now, or in this video's notes. Let's get started. Here is my Star Wars vehicle sales application. In a prior video, we modified the vehicle service to create signals from observables and observables from signals. In this video, We'll work with the cart feature and replace the behavior subject here with a signal. Before we start modifying the cart component code, let's take a quick look at how the cart functionality works. I'll run the application. And here is our welcome page. Click on the vehicle list and we see our list of vehicles. Select a vehicle and the vehicle detail appears. Click on Add to Cart to add the selected vehicle to the cart. Click on the Cart menu, and we see the item in our cart, along with the cart totals. Notice that when we select a new quantity, the extended price, shown here as cost, reacts to the change and recalculates. Let's focus on the code for this cart item. Here is the cart item component. I'll open the cart.ts file so we can see the interface definition for our cart and cart item. As expected, the cart is an array of cart items. A cart item includes a vehicle and the quantity. Looking at the cart list component, we see that it's still using an observable. We'll change the cart service from an observable to a signal in a later video when we talk about managing state with signals. For now, notice the template. We loop through each cart item, create a cart item component, and pass in the cart item as an input property. Going back to the cart item component, here is that input property. When the property is set, it emits the passed in cart item to our behavior subject. So our behavior subject emits a cart item anytime one is provided to this component. Let's instead create a signal. Cart item equal signal. And we'll add signal to the import. Next, we need to define a default. A signal always has a value, starting with a provided default. We'll use the same default used by the behavior subject. I'll copy it and paste it. So now the two code lines for our behavior subject become one line for our signal. Let's delete these two lines and update our comment. Next, we modify our input property setter to set the signal instead of emitting to the observable. We'll call set to set the cart item to the provided item. We'll delete the code that references the observable. Note, however, that there's a bug in Angular version 16, RC1, that won't allow setting a signal in an input property. This was fixed in RC2. Note also that Angular v16 will have signal-based inputs. As of this recording, they weren't yet implemented. I'll cover how to use signal-based inputs in a later video. Scrolling up, let's delete our unused imports. We are no longer using our XJS in this component. Scrolling back down, in our two methods, on quantity selected and on remove, which removes an item from the cart, Let's change the first argument. Instead of referencing our input property, let's pass the value of our signal. Don't forget the parentheses to read the signal value. But we still have an error reacting to our observable and calculating our extended price. Any idea how to fix that? If you set a computed signal, you are correct. We'll create a new signal called EX price without the dollar. Then call the computed creation function, and we'll add the import. For the computed expression, we'll read the cart item signal. Again, don't forget the parentheses. We'll reference the quantity and multiply it by the cost of that vehicle. We'll again read the cart item signal, reference the vehicle, 
and reference the cost and credits property. There's a little problem here in that the cost and credits is stored as a string, so we use the number function to coerce the value into a number. Now we can delete our extended price observable, and our errors are gone. We now have two signals, our cart item and the computed extended price. What about our array here? Since we bind to this array in the template, let's make that a signal as well. We'll call the signal creation function and pass in this array as its initial value. Now that our component state is defined with signals, let's update the template to bind to those new signals. Here in the cart item component HTML file, instead of binding to the observable using the async pipe, we'll bind to our signal. And anywhere we reference the item, we'll read our signal. I'll select item dot, press Control Shift L to select all occurrences, and change it to cart item parent parent, and press Escape to finish. Scrolling down, let's find where we're referencing our quantity array. We're binding it here to our select option. The NG4 now needs to read the signal instead. Scrolling down further, Lastly, we'll modify the extended price to bind to our signal. That's it. Let's bring up the app and see if everything still works. Click Vehicle List to see the list of vehicles. Select a vehicle and click Add to Cart. Click on Cart, and we see our cart. Change the quantity, and our extended price recalculates. Nice. Going back to the code, We've successfully changed our synchronous behavior subject to a signal, and the code that reacts to cart changes is now a computed signal. Why replace our behavior subject with a signal in this scenario? Well, simplified binding. We can bind directly to our signal instead of using an async pipe. No need to subscribe. Signals don't require a subscription. Computed properties. Instead of reacting to emitted items from an observable, we instead create a computed property, which is arguably a bit easier to read and understand. And improved change detection. Though this feature isn't implemented yet, we can prepare by changing to signals now, ensuring we're ready for a potential zoneless future. Looks like signals won this battle. If you have any questions or would like to see a video on another signal topic, please post those questions or suggestions in the comments. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe!